All right. So before we start, I just want to uh, walk through a little bit about uh, some some even important note that we really need to have to support. The first thing is to identify yourself in the Zoom so we know who you are. And sometimes when you raise the questions, I know who asking, so I can I can name it. I can name you uh, easy uh, easier. And if you are not talking, then please mute your phone to avoid a uh, background sound coming through. And if you have any questions during the time of the session, feel free to post that into the QA, in, in, into the um, uh, Zoom chat so we can come back when the QA session comes. And because we have many other people, so I really appreciate if you focus your question in, into the presented topic only. Uh, if we have time, we can discuss further, but actually I, I, I think one hour and a half is not uh, too long. So. I guess we focus on the questions re related to the topic could be higher priority. And because the, we are going through Zoom, so if you have any problem with the bandwidth, with the internet connection, uh, just uh, feel free to turn off the camera to save the bandwidth. All right, then now we can go ahead and get started. Um, I uh, introduced myself uh, the last session. Now today I uh, want to Reintroduce myself again because some of you might be joining for the first time. So my name is Huata. I am the uh, senior project manager at Wise Life. I have been working with Wise Life for uh, two and a half years, but uh, I have about ten years working with Archive in multiple areas. I have several years, several years working in US and working with uh, big clients. Uh, so today I, I'm gonna share with you about uh, the planning section and the plan, planning topic only. So the plan is we will have another uh, another speaker will, to be sharing with me, but uh, he has some urgent thing that uh, he cannot join today. All right, so this is the main topic that we are going through today. Uh, the first is we I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the. Uh, overview about agile planning and why it is different between agile planning and uh, traditional planning. And then we will go deeper into the release planning and iteration planning. And also we, uh, we shared about how we do the daily planning and what is the common mistake that we normally have with the daily planning. And the last part will be the uh, Q&A. So in, any one of you have any questions, we can Wait for that. And actually, during the, the, the time of the session, we have some some right time for for the Q and A. But but the, the the main part of by the end, we we'll have the Q and A again. Okay. Uh, now let's start with the agile planning overview. So planning is something that we everyone of us know that we have a plan all the time. Even when we want to build a house, we need a plan. We do the planning for that. Even if we want to cross the street, we still need a plan in mind. So planning is very popular and, and it, it appeared in everywhere in, in our life. And especially for the project management, planning is it's very important. So before going further into the planning, I just want to, to talk a little bit about the cone of uncertainties. So the cone of uncertainty is the concept uh, using in the software project management. Um, and you, you can know that uh, in the uh, horizontal axis, you can see that the, the project timeline, when it starts and uh, go to the end of the project, at the beginning of the project, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, the uncertainty level is very high. At the time when we start the project, we may not know about how many resources we may have to the project and the requirement is not clear. The technology, maybe we are, we are not really sure that we are going with what technology. And sometimes even we don't know what team we will, will do the work at the planning, at the beginning of the project. So at that level, the uncertainty is very high. So the, the, the estimation variation will be, have, will have a very big range. So, by the time of the project go on, we do more, we understand, we learn, we experience, and then we, uh, we can have more knowledge about the project. So 
we can the the the, the level of uncertainty will be reduced, and then we have more accurate estimation. So mm, until the end of the project, sometime when we when the first, when the project is done, we transfer to the to the maintenance team or we transfer to the uh, to the production. That means at that time there everything is clear. That means the level of uncertainty is at zero. Uh, so at that time we know exactly what we have done. But before the project start, we know we know very less about what we're gonna do and uh, what we, what we are waiting for. So uh, why the cone of uncertainty impact to the planning and an estimation? You can see that we estimate at the, at the beginning of the project and the, the range of the variation will be very, very high. That means the change of inaccurate happen is high. So uh, the estimation at that time give us, give us the, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of risk could happen. And the planning as well, when we plan at the beginning of the project, the plan will not be accurate, and then it will need to change later. So traditionally, we have uh, the waterfall framework with the traditional planning, and we have our track planning. And I, I would like to share the two pictures here so we can compare it easier about how the traditional planning go and our track planning go. So with the waterfalls framework, we tend to plan everything at the beginning of a project. We conduct a very long time, a long workshop. We dig down the most we can, we, we can and try to understand everything of the product, about the requirement from the client. And we plan ahead of all the development time of the project. So we plan for, uh, the re, for uh, every single task. So we try to do as, mo as much as possible at the beginning of the project. So we plan everything and expect that the, the, the plan will go steady like that. So what we plan will go, we expect that nothing will be changed. We, we expect that the scope will, be, will remain the same. We expect that the team will have, will be strong, will, be, uh, will have the capability of doing the work. We, we expect that uh, uh, everything will go as we plan. But, in reality, the plan is the plan, and that is always be changed all the time. So in our, in our try, we do something different. So we at the at the first level, let's come back to the uh, the corner of uncertainty. We can see that at the beginning of the project, with the traditional way, we have to plan everything at the beginning of the project, where we know the less, but we want to plan everything at that time. But with RGI, we don't want to put everything at the beginning of the project. With the level of, of understanding, we just as we just do the planning based on that level. So what we are doing with, with RGI, we plan overall, we have the plan for, for the whole project, but it is in just high level. And at the beginning, we just focus on what we know. And we we expect very short iteration. Um, so the actual planning and and traditional planning have a lot of difference. So in the traditional waterfall planning, we plan everything and we expect that every every single member in the team understand about that plan, and we when and we direct them to follow the plan. But in Achai, we we don't do that that way. We want to have the team to find the old way to go to their destination. Now, let's say we have the product, we have the plan, and we have the vision of that product, and we plan one when in short iteration uh, to achieve that that product. And somehow, in during the time of development, the product vision, uh, the product feature and requirement may be changed depend on the feedback from the user depends on the market need, depends on the business strategy change or whatever. We change that and the team, we allow the team to follow the old way to find a part. And with traditional planning, we plan everything we, and come out with a very long gun chart uh, sheet. For example, if you ever were with the Microsoft project, sometimes we have a project with very, very long gun chart and every, 
and we, it looked like a huge list of every single task that need to be done, what done, what is doing first, what is doing next. And we, net, we don't expect anything to be failed. But with agile planning, we do something different. We expect something to be failed. If it's failed, let's fail fast. And then we learn, we adapt, we adjust to make the, uh, the things better from the next iteration. And in traditional planning, we plan everything at the beginning. So we don't expect any change in the scope. Let's say we want, uh, anytime one client wants want something, one uh, wonder we we explore the requirement we finalize the requirement baseline that sign on that and make sure never it's, it's not going to change and during the time of development absolutely there will be something change because when we plan too far then the the change happened by by the outside factor for example the change in the business direction the change in the in the market coming back, like you launched, we plan for the product, it will be launched for the next two years, and then we we plan everything at, the, at today and expecting that the next two years still fit the market, but now the market is, is not like that. The market change every day. So if you keep the same requirement at the beginning day and the next two years, we expect that the product will still satisfy the need of, of customer. It, it is not a good way to maintain a product like that. So with Archive, we flexible in the scope. We want to adjust quickly to adapt with the change in the market. And in the, um, in a traditional way, we, we want the team to collaborate, to make the team work. We boost up the, the, the we direct the team to have the, the, the team collaboration and bring up the whole the performance of the whole team. But not in our child, it it is different. Let's say we want the team to be self-managed, self-organized. That means they, they work closely together and and everyone has everyone is the project manager in the scrum team. We can say that because we don't have a very specific role of the project manager in the scrum team, but everyone have this the have the the way to define his own planning and follow this, this shared team goal. So that is the difference between a traditional planning and our track planning. And let's make, let's uh, look back and why, what is, what are the reason why their traditional planning fell? So in traditional planning, we take, we break the, uh, the requirement into multiple activity and we put all into the gun chart and we want to make sure that what start is being done in what time of the project timeline and what is doing first, what is what is being done first, what will go next. And actually that is the priority by their activity. It's not by the future. Uh, we plan by the activities somehow, some act activity would depend on each other. So some feature will need to wait a long time to all the activity to, to be finished, to make that deliver. But in Agile, we, we use the feature. So let's say we have a very short iteration and then we expect that some feature will be delivered by the end of that iteration. So we plan by the feature. So by the end of very short iteration, we have something to deliver. And with the traditional way, we, because we, we plan by the activity, so we don't, we don't priority the feature. But in, in Agile, we have a very short iteration. We can develop the, the feature by, by based on the priority of that. For example, I want to launch that feature because of the business need, because the user is expecting something like that right away. So the next release goal, we want to have that feature right away. So we can switch between uh, the feature to deliver. It need, it need not to wait until the end of project to deliver everything together. And like the traditional way, like, like I share about a corner uncertainty, we plan everything at the beginning where the level of uncertainty is very high. That means we plan with a lot of risk in there. So sometimes we, we don't know what we don't know. That means we ignore some uncertainty in there. And we plan too far and expect it never change, but actually it change, it change. And, and then um, by the time when we go to the end of project, everything is, it, and then the, the, the goal of project may not 
satisfy the need from the from the from their uh, from the market anymore. And and a very important thing is like in a traditional way of planning, we plan we plan by uh, we estimate and plan by the activity. We submit a very long Gantt chart to the the project plan, and we and we submit that to the to the stakeholder to the management, and then it come it becomes the commitment. So let's say we plan that okay, I want to deliver this project by next three months, and then go to the next three months. They expect the same. They expect the stakeholder expect that you deliver what you committed. But with Achai, it is different. We open. Uh, we transfer of uh, the progress of the team and the plan is shared. So everyone understand the goal to be going through to work. And it is like the responsibility or rather than the commitment. So with the HI, we, uh, we have multiple levels of the planning. I'm sharing the planning onion here. It's called onion because it has multiple layer. So we can see that at the biggest layer outside, it is strategy. Uh, for example, in business security board uh, or the company, company has the strategy to launch, to launch something to the market. Uh, they want to invest in something. And so the strategy will be defined by their security uh, board. And I, I don't think the strategy will, will change frequently. So it, it will be the, the, the least change in, in the planning onions. And go to the portfolio, they will have, they will define some product vision to satisfy the business need, the, the business strategy. So then we have the product vision. The product vision will be managed by the product team. Maybe it will be changed, it will be revised, it will be reviewed by yearly. So. Um, maybe in, 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 in some company, they ha have shorter time of the product deliver, so they may have a, a, a shorter time, but normally their product vision could be reviewed by years and come down to the product level. When we have a product vision, then we will define a product and we have a roadmap of that, or how to launch that product, when to launch the group of feature. For example, we have the product to be launched by the next year, but by the next year, so that is very long time. But during the next year, we don't wait until the end of the, 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 the project and to launch everything. We launch, uh, we define the roadmap when to launch the MVP version or the version one, version two, and then we improve from there. So then by the end of the time, uh, uh, by, by the, by the time going, we will have a better product and get, get a, collect the feedback from the user quickly to adapt, to adjust the product. So every product, we will have a roadmap, go to the lower level. We have the release for the roadmap. For example, we have a long roadmap with multiple releases inside. So we don't plan to work all that release. We just have briefly understanding about the release and we plan the first release first before going further into the next release and the next release. We just plan the high level of that. And but for the details planning of the release, we just plan the, the next release right ahead of the time. So by doing that, we will have uh, more details about the need and it will be well, it will be more accurate compared to the business need. And the team will focus only to that release. So they have the full attention to that. They don't need to be stretched out into very long time of planning. And when we have the release planning, we, we have the release plan. We know exactly what we gone and what we want to, re, to release by next three months, for example. We will break it down into multiple iteration. Iteration is we exactly we release something. Maybe it's not released to directly to the production, but it released to the stakeholder to understand what has been done. And then we combine that maybe by the end of the, of, the, of the release, we have the major release to the production. Or maybe in some product planning, uh, we launched directly to the production right after an iteration. And that is the sprint. We can, we, an iteration is the sprint in the Scrum. If we are talking about Scrum framework, we have an iteration is a sprint. And then 
every day during the scrum, we have the daily planning. Daily planning is an activity that normally we call uh, daily scrum. Actually, daily scrum is not really an, an, a planning session. It is like we share the planning because the daily planning is done by an individual members in the team. Everyone in the team will have his own planning for that day. So they bring up into the daily scrum to share that today I'm gonna do something and what is the impact to your plan. And we can see, you, you look at a tweet triangle, I put it here. So the frequency of the activity will be more with the lower level and will be less with the higher level. And beside that security and involvement so by uh, it will be more involved into their uh, planning when we have the higher level of planning and to the details level, we don't expect the executive member to join the team to do, to check everyday planning or the every, every single spring planning. All right, so that is an overview of their, uh, their uh, agile planning and comparison between agile planning and, uh, and the traditional planning. Um, before we move toward, forward to the release planning, anyone has any questions, you can post that into the chat. All right, so let me continue uh, with, the, uh, with the release planning, so then we can, we can come back with the Q&A later, okay? So because the, in the scope of the session today, I just want to focus on the release planning, iteration planning and daily planning only, their product vision and also the strategy portfolio, we will, it, it, it is more to the business level, it is not, in, not too much in the project management level. So we, we, don't, we don't talk about that today. So first we want to go to the release planning. So what is the release planning? Like I share, the release planning is an activity that happened before the spring, the, the release start. And somehow we, in the product roadmap, we have multiple release. Let's say we have some milestone of the product roadmap where we want to, re, when we want to release something to the production, to the customer, to the user of the product. So normally a release should be around three to six months and it is just a high level of release. So let's say we want to uh, release the major group of feature to the user by the next four months, for example. So we have roughly about what we expect by the end of that, at that time. And we plan for that to be launched to the production. But that when the release planning happened, we don't focus in too much details level of how many iteration in there and what in exact what exactly be to be in an iteration for example we released we we plan for the release in the next three months but we don't want to put effort to put uh, to set everything into uh what will be done in the spring one the spring two spring three spring four spring five we don't we don't do that maybe we can have the rough estimate about how many how many how many feature we want to deliver in, in its screen. We can allocate that, but remember the release planning is just for the, the full release. If we break it down to the iteration, it could be changed. Depends on the on the deliverable after each screen, depend on the on the feedback we get after every single screen review. For example, when we when we release something by the end of, of um, an iteration of the screen, then we collect some feedback from client, from user, and then we see that we need to adjust the release planning because it's not uh, it not appropriate anymore. It's not uh, bring us. It is not bringing us into the goal we define with the product vision anymore. So remember that with the release plans always be will be updated frequently. Depends on the feedback we get. So how do we do that? and who is involved into the release planning. So actually, if we go into the Scrum framework, we can see that the Scrum master is the one, the first one to join the, the release planning sessions and also the product owner. So uh, don't mistake here, the Scrum master is the one who facilitate the meeting, make sure it happened. 
he is not the one who make the planning. He just facilitate and, and help all the members in the team to, um, to do the activity. But the product owner will be representing the, uh, the view of the product by God. He is the one who represent what he expect to be released by the end of the release. And absolutely the development team, the development team is the one who will be taking care of the work. They need to know exactly what they're gonna do and they will be the one who provide their the input to the planning. They will be the one who know what is the major impact to the, to the development, to the, uh, to the planning, to the plan. So they will be the one who uh, play the key role into the, the release planning sessions. And beside that, we have another um, member to join to the release planning, that is stakeholder. So why is stakeholder joining this release planning? Release planning is somehow related to the business uh, uh, need. So the stakeholder will be the advisor to make the, the decision and will be the sponsor on anything related to that one. So they need to know uh, what they can expect after the next three months and what is what are, is the thing they can what are the thing they can support the team to make that done. So they can give it an advice, uh, advisory decision and to help with the release plan. So how do we do that? So actually, there are two approaches that we can we can use with the release planning. The first thing is when we when we determine a release, uh, we determine by the, the way of how much we can accomplish by what day. That means we define a, a specific day. For example, you want to launch the product to uh, for before the Christmas to sell some Christmas product or something like that, or maybe it just um, for that for for that uh, occasion. Uh, so the the release day should be fixed, and they we want to have okay. I want that product to be released by uh, early of December. So how much of the work could uh, could the team put into the release plan to make that done by that day? So we, we set the target day and we plan for how, how, how much of work we can put in there. So that is the first approach of release planning. And the second one is we want to launch a group of feature. For example, that is there's some major group of feature of the, of the product we want to release. So we don't want to lose anything in there. So we want to de deliver all the feature in that group. So the, the planning is, based on the group of that feature, how long it would take to, be, to release the group, uh, that group of feature. That means based on the work we want to deliver, we plan for the date. It opposite with, with the, 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 the other approach where we have the day, we determine how much of work we need to be, we need to put in there. So those are two separate approaches that we are going with the release planning. And there is one thing we need to remember. We always, but for, because the release somehow it takes about three to six months, depends on the product vision, depends on the business need, depends on the nature of the, the team, uh, the performance of the team, about the way you work in, the, in your organizations. So, but it is, it is like, it's not short enough. So we have to buffer for something. The first thing is buffer for feature. How do we do that? So let's say we plan for a release on the next three months. Then three months is still somehow is the time that some risk could become issue. That means anything could happen. Um, for example, uh, by the you have some technical limitation, you have some some something happen with the team, so then you cannot deliver what you plan for then we need to define a, a buffer for the feature. So we group the feature into two separate groups, determine the list of mandatory feature where we put all the feature, we, we, it is mandatory to be delivered, it is the first priority. And then we add the lesser priority feature into another group. So we focus on the, on the major feature first. Then anytime anything happened with the, uh, anything happen with the team, anything happen with the planning, maybe the performance of the team is not like we expected. 
then we we still have some mandatory features to be delivered by the end of the release instead of having a loss of uh, uh, not high not priority feature going to be delivered but some major feature is not catching the deadline all right so that is the major that is the buffer for the feature and another buffer we should be allocated it it, it much depend on on the team on on the historical data it's about unknowns we like like i shared earlier we don't know what we don't know something we plan we, we want to know everything but so many things that will happen that out of the expectation for example um somehow we uh, somehow the team is going well and then one developer decided that he want to leave the company so then that will be the major change and then we need to re release him and add a new resource. The new resource needs some time to learn, to understand about everything. And he needs some time to adapt and catch up the team. So that will slow down the team performance and that will impact to the release planning, but the, to the uh, with, uh, impact to the, re the, uh, to the plan. So uh, when we do release planning, the buffer is very important. All right, so I think let's have a post. Do you have any questions related to that? Uh, I have a question from Lises. In our trial planning has never been implemented before. What suggestion could you give to indicate, uh, indicate and follow up? So Lises, um, I'm not sure that I understand your questions clearly. Is that about in your organization, you never do anything related to a chat planning? The team is, is not, the team doesn't have experience in that, isn't it? All right, so that is the, um, the big change. Um, so if we, if the team never, never done the, the chat planning before, they will tend to go to the traditional way. They tend to be afraid of giving the estimation and planning. That happened. Like for example, when you when you when you when you gather a team that familiar with traditional way, it is not easy to ask them to provide the uh, accurate amount uh, of plan estimation and the planning. The reason why, when they give the planning. Uh, they in the estimation on the plan they plan for for uh, something they tend to look for more because the plans and the estimation will become the commitment they are afraid that by that time i may not um, commit I, I may not finish the work i committed so that is uh, that is something they are scared of so if, uh, if we if we want to change if we want to implement the agile planning with the team we need to let them understand about the approach of Achai, about the share effort from the team and about the things that we do the best and we learn, we understand and the plan could be changed. And we adjust the plan to make sure we deliver the good product. So when they understand the approach, they will follow. And let's, Lisa, does that answer your questions? Okay, so let's come to the, another the questions from from either from either. Uh Sorry, did I, if I pronounced your name in, um, incorrectly. How much time we should and can allocate on unknown situation? So, uh, the unknown situation, like I share, we know uh, we don't know what we don't know. The unknown situation is something we don't expect, and we we never some 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 unknown situation is. We never, we never know it happened. And, and so how much of the time we allocate is much depends on the historical data. So uh, with the organization, with the team, with the performance of the team, and uh, sometimes when we do more, we understand that how many percent we should allocate to that. With the younger team, with their new organization, the buffer is, is high, it's much higher. Uh, so let's say in the, in the PMP concept, they may allow to the, 
um, plus or minor, uh, minus 50% of allocation what at, the begin, uh, uh, at the beginning of the project. But it depends, much depends on the nature of the team. For example, you have a team who work on a similar project more. They understand, understand about the framework. They understand about the technology. So the buffer will be lower. But let's say you have a team of Java developer and, and now they move to the Python project and just few members in the team understand about, a, and about, and about, understand about its Python language. Then you need to buffer more uh, because they need some time to learn and sometimes they never expect some challenge that may, they may face during the time of development. So I cannot give you a very specific number. It much depends on historical data. All right, so, so if we have, uh, let me move, move on to the next session and then we can come to the question again. Uh, all right, so now we come to the iteration planning. So iteration planning, like we shared earlier, when we have a uh, we have the release, we will have we will break into multiple iteration. So an iteration is a very short deli delivery plan. So in a scrum book, it is recommended to have the spin uh, from the time of one to four weeks. So technically, I, I think the popular time, the, the more popular time of the sprint is two weeks. Uh, like in Wise Life, in a project I, I, I ever managed, normally I have two weeks of uh, sprints. So iteration planning is a short release. So how do we do and who is involved in there? So iteration release, we need a Scrum Master, product owner and the Scrum team. The reason why we, we don't have the stakeholder here because the stakeholder would may have some inf, inf, information about the, the release that is long time, but the release is there is something we deliver to the, to the production. It impacts the business need, but in the iteration, it is, com, it is solely the, the thing that the Scrum team is doing. So they gonna be responsible for that. They gonna be, uh, taking care of the work to be delivered by the end of every single iteration. And the stakeholder will be joining at the sprint review, showing where the team is showing, what they have done, what they, what they, uh, what is the feature they deliver by the end of the sprint. And again, the Scrum Master is the, per is the person who facilitate a meeting only. It, he is not the one who conduct their uh, planning. Let the team do that. You are the one who help the team to fast, to do the activity right and make sure that the team has outcome before going out of the meeting room. And the product owner is the one who represent the details of the backlog and he will clarify the acceptance criteria of every single user story. He will answer the questions and he will know uh, what he could expect from the team by the end of the next two weeks. So, Mostly, most likely the, the, the plan is done by the Scrum team. So that means the responsibility will come to everyone in the team, uh, especially for the development, uh, for the developer, because developer is the one who know uh, what he gonna do and what he gonna deliver. And he know exactly what the, what the team expect by the end of the next two weeks. Um, so the planning for the, for, the, for the screen is not for every single specific, member in the Scrum team. It is for the whole team to share that plan. For example, the goal is like, we, we gonna deliver a list of the feature by the end of next week. Everyone understand that, everyone know what needs to be done. So it is not, okay, I take two story and then I when I finish two story, I'm done with the screen. I don't care about the others. It is not like that. It is about sharing the goal of, of everyone in the team. So. If I finish my work, if there's something in the backlog, now no one touched that yet, I can pick that up and I can do the work. And for example, if anyone in the team has having a problem, I can jump in support. And let's say the planning is shared. So everyone has the responsibility toward that goal and what to be added into this planning. So before going to the spring planning, 
the the very important thing is like we need to define the, the goals of the sprint. We cannot uh, we cannot uh, plan for something that we are not sure. We expect that this sprint, we expect that group of feature to be done. So we plan toward that. What is the group of feature like the APIC 13 or something we want to deliver by the end of that sprint. And before going to the sprint, the sprint planning, we need to have the backlog, the product backlog to be ranked and groomed. That means all the, we, we, don't, we don't let the team go to the, the sprint planning. And at that time, we start showing the user story, explore that, understand, try to understand that and discuss about solution or something. It is good about understanding about a requirement. It is not the time. That should be in the another session called backlog refinement or backlog grooming. So before going to the planning session, we need to have the uh, the range and groom backlog item and and the the backlog item should be estimated and give the user uh, the the story point as as well. So then we we go into the planning. We already have everything. So when we do the planning, there is very important that document that we need to walk through with the team. That is definition of ready. So uh, I I see some uh, I I see some of the team uh, in my previous organization when I work with them. Some of the team they. They, they, they don't care much about the definition of ready, but actually the definition of ready is very important to do the sprint planning. So why it is important and what it is in there for the definition of ready. The definition of ready is to define what, when the user story is ready to be put into the a sprint. And also the definition of ready for the sprint is when the sprint is ready to be kicked off and start. So uh, let me show you an example of that. Okay, here is an example of definition of ready. So I divided the definition of ready into two parts. One is definition of ready for the user story. And another one is definition of ready for the sprints. So here are some, some key points I put into my definition of ready. But it may be different, depends on your team, your organization, your standard, your processes. So normally we have something like the user story is clear. That means it is understandable. And everyone understand that there is nothing hidden in there. And uh, for example, if you want to put a user story into the, to the uh, sprint planning, but the sprint, the mockup, the design is not there, is not ready. So the team will not know what they want to do. The developer will, will, uh, will not know that uh, what they should put in there and how much effort they need to build that screen. So normally the screen mockup and the design need to be attached to the story and, and it is ready, defined. Some, some of you may come back with a question saying that, let's say when the story has the mockup, but the mockup could be changed. For example, we start and we see that that button is not good anymore. We want to change the button, change the color, or maybe change the call to action with the, with the button. How do we do that? The thing is, before the sprint, uh, before the sprint start, and when we want to put a user story into the sprint planning, it needs to satisfy the user story, uh, the definition of user story. That means the mockup is baseline. If any change in there, we need to lock it into the separate user story at enhancement user story and put into the next screen. We don't change anything after we the user story is, is ready, is put into the screen. So acceptance criteria is defined. We cannot do the user story if the acceptance criteria is not defined. The developer will not know uh, when they, they can deliver the, the development of uh, that user story if there's no acceptance criteria or maybe the acceptance criteria is not well defined yet it's still being developed it's, it's not ready and if the user story is not reviewed and agree in the team uh, it should not be put into the the, the the sprint just because when they don't understand they cannot plan for that it need to be reviewed in the backlog grooming that the reason why I'm seeing that I'm saying that 
uh, the backlog is groomed and, and ranked by a priority. And other than that, we have many other items that we need to have in there. For example, the story need to be sized by the delivery team. That means it is estimated and have the user and story point. And the story can be developed independent from the other user story. For example, you plan for something, you plan for the user story to put into the sprint. But actually, it depends on another user story, it's, which has not been developed yet. So then when you start the user story, it's, uh, when you start the sprint and you know that, you have to deliver that. But the other user story is still there. It has not been done. So you need to wait until that one is done so then you can pick it up. So if it depends on other user story, both user story need to be in the same sprint and need to be aligned together to make sure all will be delivered together. You should, you cannot put a user story which depend on the user story, which has never been done to, an, to the sprint because somehow it will be moved out of the sprint. It, it does, doesn't fit the sprint anymore. And some other, some other items here I, I'm sharing here is like um, the team need to know what they need to start to work on. And also the user story is testable. The team understand how to tell the user story. The reason why, after uh, the user story is done, then we have uh, the definition of done. That means the user story need to satisfy that. If in, uh, in the item of the definition of done, normally we have that the user story is tested. But the thing is, if we, we develop something, but we don't know how to test that, it should not be verified and should not pass the definition of done. So that is the sample of the definition of ready for the user story. But let's say we put something to the, the sprint and we put the user story to the sprint, but somehow we want to kick up the sprint, the kick sprint start. So the sprint needs to satisfy the definition of ready for the sprint. So that means everyone in the team will review and agree what we have put into the sprint planning. If they don't agree and they feel that it's not, it, it doesn't fit to the two week time frame, that means the sprint is not ready to start. And if we have the priorities back up, I mean, what is first, what is, uh, what is your next priority? The priority could be changed. Yeah, could be changed a little bit during the time, but at least at the beginning, we need to know what is the, the thing we need to pick first. And uh, uh, let's say every, everything in the sprint should be transferred, which should be shared and underst understood by everyone in the team. There's no hidden word. For example, if you, if you, if you find that, okay, we, will, we will plan to do something in this sprint, but it is not documented at a, at a user story. It is not documented in, in a, a task or something. You cannot put into the screen and expecting, okay, I will put that later. It should not be like that. All right, so that is an example of definition of ready. And coming back to here, when we want to add something into the screen, we need to have the screen going. We need to understand that and we need to have the ranking groom back of item and definition of ready. All right, so how do we do the, the screen planning? Absolutely, there are two ways of the, uh, there are not a two ways of doing the planning for the sprint. That is the commitment driven and the velocity driven. So what is that and how we do that? So the commitment driven is like at the beginning of the project at the, the sprint one, we don't know about the, the, how much the team can do, how, how many, user story we can finish. So we normally going with the commitment driven. So let's say we we start adding the, the story into the sprint until the until everyone in the team see that we can commit that. If they feel that that is too much, we cannot take, we can do that much, then we need to pick out something. And they feel that, no, we still have bandwidth to do more. I, I feel confident about adding something more. That means we add something more. And the velocity driven is, is is different. We just adding the, the story into the screen by the by the priority, and because every story will have a story point, so the sum the sum of the user story point will 
to be around the matching the velocity. So we have the number of velocity, then we add a, uh, add a story to, to go close to that number. So depends on the situation in the team, it may be a little bit lower or maybe it a little bit higher. So that is two different ways of doing this planning. Uh, I will show you two, two flow that explain, uh, explain more details about this one. The first thing is commitment-driven planning. Actually, this one is from, uh, from the book, Agile Estimating and Planning of my core. Okay, if you read the book, you can see this one. Uh, I just rewriting that, that here. So commitment-driven planning is like the team will, will plan based on the commitment. For example, at the beginning of the, the sprint, normally we need to adjust the parity. Yes, we have to have the groom backup and, and ranking the the priority of the backup item before we do that and we need to identify the spring goal for example we need to to deliver that group of feature so based on the 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 goal of the spring then we have the group of feature we want to put in there so we start putting in the story and we will work together to break down to the task so for example, we break that to the task and maybe we can assign to a specific, uh, uh, we will let the developer who want to take that and they will, he will take care of that user story and he might provide some estimation on the task. So when we al allocate the, the first batch of the user story to the team and we add for the, uh, the team about how do you feel about this commitment? Can we make that? And the team saying that I cannot commit anymore. Uh, it's too much, so we then start removing a story to, to let the team feel confident. And if they feel that, no, it still have room to have more, we still can, can commit something. I, I still think that we can take something more. Then we can add some, we can look, uh, pick up another user story, do the same thing until the team saying that, okay, that is good enough. Then we go to, we done the, the sprint planning. So normally the first sprint of the, of the project, we have no velocity numbers, then we need to go with the commitment driven planning. So how about velocity driven planning? It's about the first part is the same. We are just the parity and have an identified goal and we need to determine the target velocity. The target velocity is like, we need to define how many user story point, how many story point we, we're gonna deliver. It depends on the, the history of the past sprint. Uh, for example, the, the last sprint we have some number and we, we identify the, the average number from the, the past four, the past four sprint. So we have the, we determine the velocity of the team. So we will adjust the story point uh, with uh, we add the story to the target point. We target to something around that number, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower depends on the situation could happen during the time of the, the spin. For example, your coming spin will have a public holiday, for example. So then you lose the one day of development, then you need to lower the target a little bit. And maybe if we, you don't have the, the holiday, everything is the same, but the team is confident. They have more energy. They understand about a product more they feel that they can add something more. So we add up some more, um, some, some more story point into their plan, the target velocity. Then the team will reach that. That is how we can, uh, that is how we can increase the velocity. Uh, it's like the, the last session we shared about velocity estimation. We also shared about how to estimate the, the range of the, uh, uh, well, accurate when we, we do the velocity driven planning. All right, so that is for the velocity, uh, that is for the, the sprint planning. Uh, before we go to the, the daily planning, do you have any questions or concern I, I can answer? All right, so now let's move forward to the uh, daily planning. Daily planning, actually, uh, don't mistake that with the daily standup. So the daily standup is, is some, somewhere it's happened like that. Every developer going there like a reporting and they, they, 
they are scared of being pointed by a QA saying that, okay, you're, you have some defect. I need this feature to be delivered as soon as possible. I need my, de uh, my defect to be fixed. I need to, be, to get into the production as soon as possible. It is somehow, somewhere it is happening like this, but we, we, we want to make it different. We want to make it like a share session. I we want to have that like, um, uh, Cesar, I can, I can come back to your questions later. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, all right. Uh, now let, let's come back to the daily, daily planning. Um, so every time, uh, so the daily stand up, we have, um, we have daily scrum. Daily scrum is an event happen every morning or maybe every afternoon, depends on the team. It's it not necessary to be uh, in morning or something, but it should be like the similar time every day. It's it just limited in 15 minutes. And don't mistake in saying that daily scrum is daily planning. It's not. Daily scrum is an activity where everybody gathered together to share his daily plan. So daily planning is done by each individual members in the team. So when we do, it's in, it is like a planning session where everybody sharing his personal plan. For example, I come to their daily planning and I say that to, uh, yesterday I did something. And today I, I plan to do something and I have some, some problem, I need your help. I have some, some roadblock that uh, someone could help me. That is sharing the, the plan. I, I have my own plan. I share the plan so everybody will be aware of what I'm doing, what is the issue I'm facing so I can get help from others. And also every, everyone in the team may understand that my work will impact to their work. So they will need to discuss, somehow they will need to discuss with me or something. So don't change that into the report, the status report meeting. I, I'm seeing that happen in, in, in somewhere out there. I, I'm seeing that some daily stand up is come to their uh, report meeting where the scrum master is saying that, okay, what did you do yesterday? What is your plan for today? Do you have any problem? Yesterday I did something, today I continue to do the work. I don't have any other thing. It's just like that. It is like the status report sharing. It is, it is not right because like we share the team goal. Like the Scrum and the Archive uh, Spirit, it's like everyone sharing the same goal and everyone sharing the effort of the team. So it is sharing my individual target to reach out the, the spin goal. It is not, I'm, I'm reporting something. So don't make the, the daily Scrum like the reporting status and then make everyone scared of showing their mistake. Um, everyone is, is scared about uh, showing the problem they're having. Somehow there is some situation like this one, when you come into the daily scrum and some developer doesn't want to share his uh, low performance yesterday just because he had some, some problem. Maybe it is not a good day for him, just simple like that. And he, he was not able to perform well. And then if he is scared to share that in the daily scrum because of the questions coming from the, from the scrum master and the product owner saying that, why, why you are having that and what was your deliver? So we want to promote a spirit of the develop, developer coming to the, the, the daily scrum and say, I have problem yesterday. I was not able to perform well just because of I, I, I was not feeling well because that was not my day. So today I will work my best to cover what I missed yesterday. So that will be the spirit of the scrum team. That is where everybody sharing and and they were open to, to talk about the mistake. They open to talk about the, the problem they have. So everyone will share the effort to make it done and, and bring up the team spirit. So during the daily scrum, we inspect and adapt for it. Let's say there's something happened. We inspect and we, we adjust that to make sure it, it works. And absolutely it is transparent. Like I, sh like I have just shared, if you have a problem, say it. You don't feel scared of saying the mistake you made. Uh, you are not afraid of the problem you are having. You are not afraid of someone judge you about your performance. 
you just do the way you do. You just do the best you can to achieve a team goal. And everyone will share the effort together. When we uh, when we evaluate the team performance, it's not about individual. It is about everyone in the team. So be transparent in the daily scrum. Don't make the scrum daily scrum as like uh, the stated report. It is boring and it is like not effective. All right, so that is all I want to share about today. Somehow I go to the end and thank you for the time here, uh, listen to me. And if you have any questions, we can discuss now. Now let's come back to the question from Cesar. Do we need to choose one between commitment planning or velocity planning or we can do both? Actually, we can do both. We can do both, it's like, the first thing is like for the for the first sprint, uh, first sprint. Actually, we cannot make the velocity driven, just because we have no velocity. At that, at that point, we don't have any numbers to to be compared to. So we need to go with the commitment. But the next sprint, we need to go to follow both. Just because even we had this, the first time, the first sprint completed with the numbers of velocity. But the numbers of velocity is not really steady. The reason why there's something happened in that sprint or maybe never happened in that sprint that impacts to the numbers. So we don't, the number is still having a, a high range of, of inaccuracy. So that means we still need to go with the commitment as well. We go with the commitment compared with that numbers. The commitment in like, we go with that numbers and check with the team. Do you feel okay with the commitment we are going to make? With this sprint, do you feel okay with the numbers of the user story we are going to deliver? Somehow we we put everything into the sprint too much with the velocity numbers. And then the team feel, no, I don't feel good. I think that we cannot catch that. There are something I don't feel confident. That means we need to go back with the commitment as well so we can combine. So the combination between com the driven commitment and velocity commitment is a good way, Cesar. Uh, the next question from Felipe Lopez is about uh, the previous session. I could not uh, be present because I had uh, donate blood. Will the recording be on the YouTube channel? Or I can have access to some other platform. I think I will leave that question to now. Now, are you there? Can you answer that question from yes. Felipe? Yep. Yes, I'm here. Um, for the previous session, the AGI estimating, yes, we will publish to YouTube and you can review on the content. Then if you have any concern or question, you can reach out to Hoa or Barony via linking in the link we share in the email. Yep. All right, so do we have any other questions for today? All right, so if there is no more questions, uh, I would like to thank to everybody to spend your time uh, joining us today and appreciate the time difference between uh, countries. Uh, many of you will come coming from, from Mexico, many of you come from other countries as well. So I appreciate that you spend some time with us today. And, and that's it, that is all I want to share and thanks for your time. Last but not least, we would like to learn from your feedback. So please take one or two more minutes, have us to share your experience, your feeling, how you going through with the workshop we offer related to HI topic recently, HI's estimating and HI's planning. We are filling the feedback survey. We highly appreciate your opinion and we will improve it better in the upcoming workshop. And don't forget to follow us in on social media. All the available course or upcoming course will be shared via these channels. Yeah, thank you. I really love to hear your voice uh, regarding to what I presented today. Something maybe you can say that oh, I don't like your voice. That is still a good feedback to me as well. Thanks to everyone. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Anha. Thank you, everyone, for attending the workshop. Hope to see you in other workshop of Westlight Academy.
Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.